I tried to speak, but again, I was speechless. The angel just smiled, a kind, gentle smile, and I was made to know then about how the angels do rejoice at the moment that someone is born again. Refer to Luke chapter 15, verse 10. They are created and empowered for just this very moment. Their highest joy is to serve God and to be on assignment where the Lord sends them. They weep with joy at the moment a person receives Christ as his or her savior, and they go into action immediately. God has his will all planned out for us. We must follow Jesus. He never fails. An eternal testimony service. I was then taken to a large theater where a testimony service was going on. There were thousands there, and from what I was told, it would be going on for eternity. I heard thunderous shouting of praise and glory, and then I heard a very familiar voice. He was saying, I was given a promise from the Lord regarding the life of my grandson 35 years before he was born. I was told that he would be a blessing to his generation, and that he would be used by God in a mighty way. He was a child preacher, and now he is here. Our God never fails. I looked around to see who he was talking about. Since I also had started very young in the ministry, I was excited about seeing this man. Was the voice talking about King David, or perhaps Samuel? Was I going to get to see Samuel? I found that I could see Samuel, so I shouted, I want to see Samuel. Let me see this one who also loved God so much. Yet I would not meet Samuel here. I was led to an area that looked like a stage, and as I looked up, there was my grandpa. He was the speaker. He pointed at me and said, there he is now. I wept with joy at seeing him again, and I just fell on the marble floor. A hand picked me up. It was Grandpa's. Grandma was there too, and also my Grandpa's brothers, Lester and Marion. They had their families with them and many people whom I had never seen before. They would not come any closer, and I instinctively knew that God would not allow me to embrace them yet. Everyone was beaming with joy. Then I was instantly in another place. I was told, come, you have an appointment with destiny. I walked along, still overcome with joyful weeping and with the impact of what had just happened. I saw a group of about 14 warrior angels who were coming from the direction of the throne. The angels were a good 20 feet tall and 10 feet across at the shoulders. Their eyes glistened with a fiery light from the altars of God, and their swords were flames of fire. The ground shook as they passed by me. I stepped aside, and the angels with me bowed their heads in respect. I thought to myself, I would never want to be any demon that tried to fight with them. Just one of them could destroy an entire army. Then I heard that strong, firm, yet so gentle voice. Jesus was behind me. He said, I wanted you to see them. They are being sent into your future. They will be there when you need them. I was reminded of the scripture. Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14. Later in life, I would need them and would receive their help on several occasions, sometimes in a very special, personal, and real way. Somehow I knew that all these things were to prepare me for the future that God had in store for me. Again, I wept. The angels put their arms around me and said in unison, And God has given his angels charge over you, to bear you up, lest at any time you should dash your foot against a stone. Refer to Psalm 91, verses 11 through 12. I cried, Glory to God, with great joy. I could see Jesus again among his people, and there was a great throng of children surrounding him. I heard him say, 
Look at this. As he threw a large ball of what looked like glory cloud into the air. When it reached about 2,000 feet in the air, it exploded into a display that looked like the fireworks we are familiar with on Earth, and with such a variety of colors. Yet instead of fading away, it got bigger and bigger. Then it took the shape of a tree and slowly floated to the ground. It was instantly rooted and began to grow. It looked similar to the other trees there. It was simply beautiful. Jesus does only what is perfect. It is the law of heaven. I remember all the people who were standing there, watching with great awe. The Marriage Supper of the Lamb Then Jesus turned to me and said to the angels, Take Richard to my marriage supper feast and let him see it. It is almost ready. I was there before I could even think. I saw a building that was very tall. It had arched supports and columns that were about 50 feet apart. The tables where the supper feast was to be held were made of gold and inlaid with jewels. These tables were lined with chairs that looked like king's thrones. That's how they appeared to me and I have no other words to explain the beautiful way they were constructed. The pavilion was about 20 miles long in my best estimation. There were three rows of tables in a racking semicircle with a throne in the background. Each chair had a name engraved on the inside of the back. I asked when they had been engraved and the Lord said, when their names were recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. I grew silent and bowed my head with complete gratitude. Then I raised my head and looked ahead of me. In that same instant, I saw my name engraved on one of the chairs. I wanted so much to sit in that chair, but Jesus said, Not yet. It shall be sat in for the first time when my father says, Sit at the marriage feast of my son. A virgin shall be given and a virgin feast shall be given to a virgin groom. And again... I wept with great joy. There were goblets filled with sweet nectar from heaven. A golden dish was filled with heaven's best. Everything was prepared to perfection. The marriage supper was ready for the groom to make his entrance. There was room enough for multiplied millions of people. 6. God Knows Our Tomorrows in him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 11 through 12. I was taken into a very large building that had a huge archway. Inside were rows upon rows of shelves with books. The shelves seemed to be miles long and miles high, and the books looked about 15 feet tall. There were hundreds of angels servicing the books. They were going in and out. There was a lot of activity. The Archives of Heaven God keeps records, and this large building was the Archives of Heaven. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. Revelation chapter 20, verse 12. The archives of heaven contain the different books about our lives, and these are the books that are taken to God when judgment time comes. The books are the records of our works here on earth. If a person sins, it is recorded in the book. I was given the understanding that when we repent, anything that we have done that was wrong or sinful in nature and was recorded in the books is erased for eternity. No one can find the record, not even God. I saw another very large building different from the archives. 
in that building is a book corresponding to every person on earth. There are other books about our lives which are pictorial records. Every thought and every reaction, everything is recorded in heaven. There were many different books for each person. Tall, slender angels took care of the huge books. These angels appeared to be eight to nine feet tall, and they wrote in the books using a golden quill that was about five feet long and apparently could write forever. An angel would hold a book in his right hand and make the record with his left. I saw angels pull out books with their left hands and open the thick pages. In each page was something like a video screen, except the images were three-dimensional. The images contained the history of life, and the books were written, the pictures were created, before time. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Psalm 139, verse 16. God orders our tomorrows by our prayers today. God is able to go forward or backward in time. He created time. He invented it. God sets up our tomorrows because of our prayers and our seeking him today. God knows what is coming tomorrow. He orders our tomorrows, but he orders them because we pray today. As we pray, God gives us our tomorrows by a system of weights and measures. In other words, we can know what is coming tomorrow because of the checks and balances in our spirits. The Holy Spirit speaks to our spirits and causes us to pray and to seek God. He also confirms his plans to us and gives us direction in life, telling us yes, no, or not yet. Invariably, when we are praying about tomorrow or what is going to happen down the line, it is because God has a blessing in store for us and the devil wants to steal it away or trip us up. When we pray earnestly, it releases God to go into our tomorrows and lay a trap for the devil and make sure our blessings are there right on time. This is something I was told by the Lord when I was in heaven. I was also told that all of our tomorrows are God's yesterdays. A lesson about seeking God. I was taken to a place that I didn't understand at first. I was standing on the edge of the universe and I saw all of the universe as a great spiral. From this vantage point, it looked like a huge wound up clock spring. The center was pure white and the light got dimmer and dimmer as it got out to where I was on the edge. I was closer to this than some of the other people were. I could see people way behind me and they thought they were close. People up ahead of me also thought they were close, but they were ahead of other people in time. Then I learned a lesson about seeking God. Men everywhere ought to seek God and be thankful for where they are with him. Do not be envious of others who may be a little bit ahead and pray for those who are behind you. All together, we form a group that is seeking God. Let us not give up meeting together, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as some are in the habit of doing. But let us encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Hebrews chapter 10 Verse 25. The word tells us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together, and even more so as we see that the day of the Lord's return is fast approaching. There is strength in numbers, and when you are seeking God, the greater the anointing is, and the easier it is to pray. I learned this. God is way ahead of us because our tomorrows are God's yesterdays. He has already laid victory in our path. The Holy Spirit makes you aware, if you are really close to God, that you need to pray because there is something in your pathway you need to know about. How many times has he done this for all of us? I don't know. I can tell you only about myself. Many times he has.
And I have always been better off praying about tomorrow, knowing that God is there already. He is going to take care of me if I take special pains to pray today. God created our blessings before time began. The angels who were with me told me that some of the things I was seeing in heaven for myself were created by God before the beginning of time. Before he invented time, he finished heaven and the host of heaven, and he created the blessings I would need when I got there. I was in a store that contained clothing that was exactly what I would require in heaven. I had my own section. God created everything that I would have need of in heaven before time was even created. He knew I would be there. Yet even though certain things were made before time began, there were other places in heaven where I saw homes being built. There were angels at work, people busy at work, creating homes and putting blessings there that we couldn't receive on earth. Blessings received in heaven. 7. The Library of God's Knowledge Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. Romans chapter 11 verse 33 Another building I was taken to contained the written part of God's knowledge. God wrote some of his knowledge so that we would have something to relate to. There were individual symbols, each having the interpretation of the symbol written by God. When you are in the library of God's knowledge, your mind is automatically stimulated. I talked with one man who was in this building and he said, Brother Richard, I have been here for two millennia and I've only gotten to page two. Millions of angels come and go from this library, as well as the same number of people of the inhabitants of heaven. These angels are on their way to earth. Many times in this life, we don't know what to do, and we pray for wisdom. Again, the Bible says that angels are ministers to the heirs of salvation. Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14. The library of God's knowledge is where the angels go to get wisdom. And we can receive it. Sometimes it is brought directly by the Holy Spirit himself. People in heaven have access to it and never forget. There are great universities in heaven. I mean great. And there are many of them. Our education is not complete when we leave earth. We have only just begun. I saw two giant buildings that were colleges for people. The people were taught by angels and other people. All subjects were taught, even singing. Every song, every note, every word you are taught stays with you throughout eternity. There is no end to learning. All of your mind is illuminated to the wisdom and knowledge of heaven. 100% of your mind is used, and it is increasing in capability. You can do anything in heaven that your heart desires to do, because your desire is for the things that are right. The university buildings appeared to be a mile or two long and a mile or two deep. They were great buildings with the capacity to hold hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people. The classrooms were huge auditoriums. I could see them through the windows as I walked by. People were learning and praising God inside. And I was told that anything you learn in heaven, you never forget. I remember standing for just a moment in utter amazement. I could hear everything that was said. People were praising God, and many secrets of God were being made known. Eight.